Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to talk to you about the top three ways you can protect your investment and avoid damaging your fishing kayak. Fish on. That's a toad, brother. Golly. All right, so look, over the years, I've got a lot of experience both as a, an influencer or content creator, whatever you want to call it, a product designer in the kayak fishing space, and I owned a retail shop uh, for a good period of time, so I have had a lot of interactions uh, with kayak anglers. So these are probably, no, these are definitely the three biggest failure items. And then if you hang out to the end, I'm going to give you one bonus thing you can do to avoid damage in your fishing kayak. First and foremost, all fishing kayaks for the most part are made out of polyethylene plastic. But even if they're not all made out of polyethylene, they're all made out of plastic. And the sun is brutal on plastic. And so part of my regimen is to put this stuff right here. And listen, I'm not saying something similar to it. I'm saying this stuff. Aerospace Protecting 303. I have no affiliation with these guys other than the fact that they make awesome stuff. I'm familiar with it from my time in the Navy, uh, and we used it in naval aviation, and it is no doubt aerospace protectant. I spray, this is like Frank's Red Hot. I put this crap on everything, okay? One thing that I didn't put it on recently is my kayak cushions. I really wish I would have sprayed them down because now they're faded. I'm going to get a new cover, but this stuff right here is by far one of the best investments you can make. And the reason for that is sun and UV breaks down plastic and it makes it look ugly, but it also makes it weaker. So it creates a lot of premature cracks and things that you wouldn't have if you just took a little time, about once every six months, spray the boat down, wipe it down with a terry cloth or a rag or something like that. But 303 Aerospace Protectant is your first line of defense. Your second line of defense is to not over tighten your boat. This is gonna be one of those Chad Hoover, do as I say, not as I do moments. For just a second, I'm gonna explain that. Uh, Denny over at On The Water Innovations puts ratchet straps on his trailers. So I do use ratchet straps on the trailers, but I make sure I put my finger under the strap and I'm tightening it down. And I never tighten it so tight that I can't just pull my finger right out. You don't have to compress the boat uh, to hold it in place. But by and large, I am a big fan of these cam buckle style tie down straps more than I am a ratchet strap. So if you use a ratchet strap, use it with extreme caution. Do not over tighten it. Put your finger under the strap and before you tighten that last thing down, make sure that it's loose enough that you can pull your finger right out. It's going to feel like it's too loose, but trust me when I tell you, especially in the summer months, it's not too loose. So the number two tip is, well, just swallow the bug. Ah. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. So the number two tip is avoid ratchet straps unless you use them with extreme caution, but for the most part, avoid them and use these cam buckle style. And I'll talk about how to properly tie your fishing kayak down in a different video, but the number two tip, avoid ratchet straps, use these cam buckle styles, or use a rope where you tie a loop in there, run the rope around, go back through the loop and use a couple of half hitches. But again, the tip is avoid ratchet straps. They provide a mechanical advantage, they compress the boat, and that compression just causes cracks and whole warpage and damage to show up in places that you wouldn't even necessarily say was caused by the ratchet strap. But trust me when I tell you, we've tested them enough to know that that's one of the biggest culprits. All right, last but not least, the number three thing is keel damage. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna go, wait a minute, aren't you the guy that drug your kayak 15 miles? Aren't you the guy that swears up and down you could just drag your kayak up and down the boat ramp? The difference is I drag it flat and the difference is I get paid to beat these boats up and try to find their limitations. Um, and so your job is to do a little bit better job of protecting your investment. It's my job to break them so that you don't have to. But here's the difference. When you drag that boat, don't drag it localized to where just the stern or just the keel is on there. So when I teach videos and, and seminars on how to land your fishing kayak, I always talk about turning before you hit the ramp because where that boat hits that ramp is going to wear that keel down. And a lot of people grab the back of the boat, pick it up, put it on their tailgate and slide it forward. And that's also sliding that same spot on the forward keel. Now, I was one of the guys that developed the rear sacrificial keel. So for the most part on the back of most modern fishing kayaks, you've got that little sacrificial keel back there, pop a couple screws out, throw a new one on, you're good to go. But on the front of the boat, it wears through quicker and it's not covered under most manufacturer's warranties because it's not designed to rub back and forth on asphalt or concrete. So avoid loading your kayak by picking it up and dragging the nose and avoid running into the boat ramp and scratching it up and down. Now, I will tell you this, I found a really cool video from a guy uh, from a channel called Wendell Fishing. And on Wendell's Fishing, he made a awesome Kydex 
kill protector. Over the years, I've things like, seen things like Gorilla Tape and paint and all that. That's honestly all pretty stupid. It's not going to protect your hole. But this guy, Wendell, uh, I forget what his first name is, but I'll put the link to, in the description box to his video. Wendell Fishing, be sure to subscribe to his channel while you're there. Uh, but he came up with a really cool way to do a Kydex do-it-yourself hole protector. And I think that's something that should be manufactured. So I might even talk to a couple of you know, manufacturers or reach out to him because that is something that, that is a product because that spot where your kayak rubs on the front is definitely one of the number one failure places on modern fishing kayaks. Now, I said if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I was going to give you one bonus one. And the bonus one is big dudes like me and, you know, those of you out there that are in a similar scenario, we are the worst about getting our fishing kayak set up at the boat ramp, walking over there, getting everything rigged up and walk up right when you're getting ready to go fishing just fall into the boat okay that seat and that seat frame and that hole was not designed to take the impact of 250 plus pounds just falling down into the boat so do yourself a favor prolong the life of your boat by not just falling down in it now if you happen to be stand up fishing you lose your balance and you fall down you know that's not good but you can't help it avoid just walking up to your boat and just plopping down into that seat and dropping all your weight on it that causes a lot of premature cracks and a lot of holes that i've seen happen over the years so guys the three major things you can do protect your boat by protecting it from uv breakdown don't use ratchet straps to cause undue stress on the boat avoid running your kill into the shoreline or put that window fishing kydex um kill guard on there and then the bonus one is just don't fall down in your boat. These boats are not designed to hold up to the G-forces of 250, 300 pounds falling into the boat. They're designed for the forces of you just sitting in it and fishing all day. So anyway, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, uh, do me a favor, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video.